everybody. Welcome back. Today we're in the dining room. I'm Kelly at my soulful home. Today we're going to take a tour of the dining room decorated for Christmas. Um, we'll start right in the middle on the table. I like to have a sprawling display on the table when it's not time to dine. So I like to, to use up all the space rather than just plunking something in the center. So the palette in here are silvers and golds and sort of this creamy color white and then bringing in the wood tones with the pine cones and then the wood furniture. Um, so what I did was I took this tray, it's a dressing table tray and I found this at a yard sale for literally, you know, like five bucks. And I was gonna hang it on the wall cause I have a collection of on the wall but it didn't get up there yet. And then I put it on the center and it's so nice to have a mirrored tray or something like that in the center because it really does reflect the chandelier and whatever you put on top of it. So this is one of my favorite little tinsel trees, very sparkly. So this really looks spectacular at night. And then I tossed a little bit of the vintage snow. Now, all faux snow is not created equal. I think this is much prettier. It has, sort of has uh, almost like taupey tones in it and it really looks crystally and vintage rather than that sort of snow that looks like Epsom salt. So I would look for that if you wanna use that kind of snow. And then I always like to have candles on the table because even if we're not dining here, sometimes just for ambiance, I'll light them up. So I have a collection of six on the table, varying heights and varying materials bringing in again, the palette of the silvers and the golds and the creams. And then in my pine cones, which I have tons of, I probably start my own little forest and um, then some vintage silver balls. And so I splay them out across the table, again, working in threes. If you notice that three candlesticks, three pine cones, three balls, same on the other side. And then this runner, I really need to show you guys this runner. We have this in the store. It's amazing. It's a, it's a vintage grain sack, so I mean, very rare to find the black anyway. And then on top of it, we have embroidered monograms on either end. So I did all four of our initials. So there's PK for Kelly and Peter at this end, and there's AL for Ava and Laura at this end. So we'll show you a close up of that as the video goes along. But such an heirloom. I'm so delighted to have this. So let's take a look over here. As you notice, I didn't have any fresh flowers on the table. I will when we have dinner or Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But for now, this display, I'm not going to have to fiddle with it. You know, it's just going to stay as it is. There's um, so many things going on at this time of year. You don't have to worry about changing the water and whatnot in your flowers. So if I do want to have any sort of fresh flowers or greens uh, in my rooms at this time of year, I'm going to look for something that can really last. So it's going to be greens, um, cedar, pine, any of the greens, and also kale, which is so beautiful. And, you know, it's kind of like the true cabbage rose. Don't you think? It looks like a rose. And so this will last for forever. And look what one does in a display. So here again, it's just some greens. And I stuck one of these in. Now, if you buy these at the grocery store, sometimes they come and they're sort of all smushed in. Don't be afraid to play with it. I mean, obviously be fairly gentle, but you know, you can sort of force it open almost and have it display like this. When I got this one, it was all shut. So I just pushed it gently and flattened it out and moved it around to the way that I wanted it to be open. And then I have this vignette going on here. And again, it's pulling in the palettes. So the blacks, the creams, silver, the white, the creamy white. So it's all working with what else is going on in the room. So you might remember from some of the other videos that I was saying I needed something in this space and I had something. So this is a print from uh, Pasadena, California, as it was in 1893. So our house was seven years old and the gentleman who lived here before had this. He had it in a purple matted, for, um, purple mat. And then in this frame, I didn't want the purple. So I just took it out and I spray painted the mat black and put it all back together. But I don't, for whatever reason, it just took me forever to get that done. But the cutest thing I'm going to show you guys is that he had put a little red star, like one of those stars a teacher might put on somebody's homework right here to show where our house is. So I just thought that was so charming. And then actually my, I showed, my daughter said, oh, look, I finally hung it up. And she's like, oh, look, give it, there's this sticker stuck on it. And she started to peel it off. 
I was like, stop, that's our house. Don't peel that sticker off. So I just love it. And I like that he put that there. So, uh, and it really fills up the space nicely. I needed something big here and I'm still deciding whether I need something over there. I think not. I think it, we need a little space to breathe over there. So I have a general tip for you guys here and then I wanted to share something with you. The general idea is that if you have a big cabinet, like I have this big expanse, or uh, maybe a plain set of drawers, maybe three drawers on either side, something that um, you could hang something from, even if it's like a little tassel or something like that, it adds a lot of interest to that piece. And it might just break it up, particularly if it's a wooden piece, you might want to break it up with something. Um, not, I wouldn't suggest a little wreath on a chest of drawers, but on here, on this um, it's a secretary pseudo china cabinet. I don't go in here all that often. So I've been having this little um, preserved boxwood wreath hang here, which I really love. And it just breaks up some of the white. So I thought that was really nice. And then I found this silhouette at a recent like epic trinkets and treasure sale that I went to for the children's hospital here in LA, which was amazing. I got that trophy that I showed you in the kitchen there. And don't even get me started. I'm starting to get sweaty just thinking about how great that sale was. But anyway, I found her. And at first I looked at it and I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want that. And then immediately I thought, this could be Mrs. Hood. Like this is the incarnation of Marion Hood, the lady who built my house in 1886. So I said, yes, this is Marion. And um, so then I had to think of a really great place to hang her. And this came to mind and I just love it. She, she came on this black ribbon so it's almost just absolutely perfect so i have her hanging here now and um you can actually see her from the front door because the glass front door looks all the way through if i have the dining room door open and i just love that when i come home i can see this whole thing oh you guys it's so cozy over here i can literally just fall asleep <laughs> actually a little tired today but i wanted to show you this little area of the dining room um this is this little bump out pseudo bay window that the previous owner made this was not original to the house and it's sort of weird so we thought well what are we going to do with this area so in went this love seat sort of temporarily and it never left everybody likes to sit here and um i don't really sit here but now i am today talking to you so i can see why it's really nice and it's really really nice now at christmas time because i've layered it with all this cozy stuff so I just wanted to point out to you as a decor tip how important layering is. It has such interest to your decor, particularly if you're a neutral person. Um, so here I have an, the initial layer is really dog protection. So I have a grain sack uh, material over the cream colored settee. And then I put another grain sack on top of it. And then I just got this yummy fur over little um, like hide here. So I tossed this over here to bring in the black. And then I, I think I pointed these pillows out to you guys in the entryway video. So this is part of some of the new uh, collection that's coming from Bespoke Decor. Then my furry Mongolian. And then this is a sweater pillow that was made with a like an Irish sweater years ago. Um, so you, whatever your incarnation of layering would be, um, give it a try. Pull out some throws, you know, one is good, two is great, three might even really work for you. And layer your texture and your pillows, and you could even layer some pattern in. So thanks so much for coming by today and touring the dining room. I have the living room and the kitchen coming up soon for you, but I might take a little cue from my gal Edith here and take a little siesta on, uh, on the settee here with all these layers. So enjoy the holiday season and keep watching and I will see you soon.